I, if you hadn't already caught up, right, we're looking at the jobs that are both created or destroyed or pushed back by this new, all new industry, right? So you can see the tasks that are there. Has everyone got loaded up? Now, let's just start a few. Um, actually, by the way, uh, if you want to make a proper heading for this, you can call it more than multimedia jobs, maybe a better way to say it would be uh, expertise that is required. It's really about skill. Every expertise required by um, the multimedia industry, I suppose. <clears throat> All right, now, before I start off with a few, uh, you guys just saw a whole bunch, right? So help me out, uh, where would you start? What was the first most obvious one we looked at? The, the Foley artist, right? Now this is ingenious. The idea is that, how is this connected? Uh, you guys know exactly the right categories to think through this, right? What data type requires this? Which multimedia type, rather, requires it? Audio, yeah? And I think we, um, because we're not looking at it, we're not so conscious about how much work goes into creating the audio that we enjoy in a movie, right? Uh, not just the Foley artist, by the way. Uh, say something like the voices that you hear when you're watching a movie, okay? Then the voices aren't created by the Foley artist. That has to be created by the actors themselves. So does anyone know, what's the name of the person whose job it is to make sure they capture that audio? Have you, have you ever seen? Yeah, it's, it's about the microphone, right? So uh, much like here, how we've got a separate mic, okay? If you're out in a windy environment, you can't just use the, uh, the microphone that's on the camera, okay? You've got to have a separate one, and it's held out on a really long stick. It's called a boom, right? It's a long stick with a mic hanging off the end of it, right? So you've got what you call a boom handler, and it's their job to always be in the right place at the right time and to capture everything and to not get in the frame, which is harder than it sounds, right? Okay, so audio, that multimedia type, is requiring these kinds of people, right? And then we went and looked in the next video about uh, visuals, and uh, they distinguish between this idea of uh, the old way, which we call motion capture, What did, um, what did James Cameron call it? He was distinguishing his way. He didn't call it motion capture. Uh, he called it performance capture. What do you get as this distinction between these two? Performance versus motion. What do you think? This is going to be a really long video. Any takers? Um, do you remember, what he was trying to get at is that the actors' emotions, right? Everything on their faces is being captured. And they had to uh, design this camera that would come around and would light the face and you would get everything that the actors were actually doing, facially, right? That's a little bit different to say, if you remember, you know, Lord of the Rings, Right? Uh, when that came out, one of the big deals, particularly, which movie was it? Was it the second or the third? I think it was the second. But there was a big, there was a major character introduced who was completely um, uh, computer generated, right? And his name was? Gollum. Gollum, right? Now, by the way, why was he com completely computer generated? Uh, yeah, because when you think about what the character looks like, what the multimedia demands of it, right? To try and put a real human being into that would be um, a deeply unsettling and deeply unsatisfying, right? So that was motion capture employed there, okay? Um, the way he crawled around and moved uh, was captured by a series of, you know, special markers on a special suit, right? And therefore, you've got people involved with this, right? So you've got what we call motion capture actors. Not just regular actors, motion capture actors, right? And nowadays, uh, basically every uh, big budget video game also has motion capture actors associated with it, right? Uh, quite separate from the people who are voice actors, yeah? So you've got a whole new uh, area 
of employment that's been created by uh, this technology. Motion capture is quite new, right? 20 years ago we didn't have motion capture or performance capture. Okay, and then we moved on to a, a few general videos. Now, apart from these ones, what, what roles jumped out to you that are part of the multimedia industry? Where are you take us? Um, in the Mystery Guitar Man video, they were focusing on a, all, all of the three or four guys were a particular kind of role. Yeah, Ricky. Uh, okay, good. Special effects. So, so much of what we see these days has been altered, right? Actually, I reckon it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say um, everything we see is altered in some way. Even if it's not, you know, explosions and, uh, you know, colouring and all that kind of thing. Everything's been altered from what was actually taken off the video, yeah? So, special effects. Are people like editors? You know when you're watching those videos and there are people talking, but it's not like this, it's not just one continuous stream of talking. The, the blank spots between people's sentences have been cut out, right? Now that's not automatic. There's got to be a person who does that, right? Okay, now, um, that was a whole bunch of uh, the ones that we saw in the videos. Let's go through a few extra different ones that didn't come up there, okay? Have you ever been looking at a, um, a website or a magazine and there's like photos illustrating things, right? But it's all really standard people. Like it wasn't specifically captured for this website or this company. Um, th that, that kind of picture has a name. Does anyone know what it's called? Yeah, that's right. Stock photography. Stock photography. Now do you see how this is connected to our question? This is all about the uh, image multimedia type, right? And the people want to get high quality professional looking imagery, right? They want professional content provided to them, but they don't have the resources on the, in their own company to get it. Right? They don't have the nice flashy cameras or um, <laughs> the good looking models or the, uh, um, uh, the right lighting setup, all that kind of thing. So there are companies devoted to providing these kinds of services. Okay. All right. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, think about when you've been watching a movie, right? And things like, say, uh, we were talking about Lord of the Rings, or even something like, say, Monsters, Inc., right? Um, you've got these special effects, but more specifically, you've got people who we would call animators, right? Now, do you remember when we were looking at cell animation before? A person who was an animator before was a person who drew things out by hand, right? But now it's a little bit different. What do they specialize in? What kind of skills do they have? Yeah, it's going to be about computer graphics, right? So things like 3D modeling. You know, creating, say, um, textures, texture artists. Yeah, for instance, in Lord of the Rings, there were massive cities that were created that weren't real. They were all um, actually created by animators, right? But you want the city to look realistic, you want its bricks to look like bricks, so you've got to have people who create that, right? Um, okay, let's keep going a little bit. Um, now, actually, I'll add on top of this. Um, I talked about uh, Monsters Inc. I said, this is an interesting movie. Who are the two main characters in Monsters Inc? Do you remember? <laughs> Boo's not really a main character. Well, I suppose she is, yeah, sort of. But she's not the focus of the story, really. She's not who the drama's about. It's about um, the green dude. Uh, come on, do it. Mike Wazowski! Okay, the green dude with one eye, Mike Wazowski. And there was Sully, the big hairy guy. Okay, and Here's the thing, right? Sully, okay, uh, he's interesting as an animated character because uh, he's very different from previous characters because he was covered in, well, let's, let's, let's pick him up, right? <clears throat> Uh, monsters. That should do it, right? Ha! Excellent. Okay, let's go to let's go to this one. That's that's a good one. Okay, now just have a look at him for a second. Think about the challenge that he poses to an animator, right? And we think about the, oh, all the characters are the same. It's not true, right? Because he's covered in fur. Um, how many, how many hairs do you think he has? Or well, how many hairs do you have on your head? Like, you know, hundreds of thousands, right? So we can't traditionally um, take, you know, a 3D model 
and model every single hair. You'd be there for you know, years, right? So what did they do? What they did was they created software that would, one, uh, simulate actually all of these hairs. By the way, they're not, they're not uniform, they're not equal, because if they were, it wouldn't look very realistic, right? Uh, as realistic as a, a horned green, blue monster does, right? Uh, wouldn't look uh, realistic, lifelike. In the same way, when he moves around, okay, the hairs don't just stay still, they're not static, right? They're dynamic, they have to move in accordance to wind and all that kind of thing, right? How did they do that? They didn't just use 3D models and really nice textures, right? They had to design software specifically to handle his hair, okay? So there's all these sophisticated roles and skills behind what we see that makes it all possible, okay? Uh, on top of this, you've got general things like, say, project managers. We looked at project management for a long time. Why would a project manager be required for a, a multimedia production? What do you think? Why, does, why is a project manager required on any large project? Time is money. Okay, time is money. It has to be managed. Uh, if you don't have a project manager, um, you're going to use too much time and too much money, and it's just going to be really inefficient. And the multimedia industry, just like any, um, is built on very finite you know, money. Everything's expensive, right? Okay. So that's a, that's a long set of different roles. Um, you, can, you can go into more detail under each one, right? So uh, texture artists, there'll be specific ones who make synthetic textures. They've, they've been created, made up. Versus people who are aimed at mimicking natural textures, right? Like I talked about bricks and that kind of thing, okay? But uh, that's a set of the different kinds of expertise that's required, okay? Now, what I want you guys to do in your own uh, pairs, triples, that kind of thing, is think about if this is the positive side, this is what's been created anew, what's the negative side? Um, the, the existence of this industry has pushed back other jobs and other roles and made them less significant. We talked about the Industrial Revolution, right, and how you had new people to build factories and build machines and work the machines. New jobs, but you also had jobs destroyed. Um, or at least uh, made much smaller than they were before. So all the tailors who made clothing and, and shoes by hand, um, it, you couldn't make a living out of that anymore in the scale that you used to be able to. Okay? So I'd like you to think about <clears throat> Five existing jobs, just five, that have receded or been made redundant, unnecessary, useless by the multimedia industry.